Hello and welcome to Types TV. Uh, we finally won a game from going behind, so it's going to be a great weekend, this one. A lot to talk <laughs> about. Good positive things coming out in it, and the bounds of it we kind of know and see. Bearded Tyke, uh, Ryan, uh, how's it going, yeah, mate? Well, oh, well uh, yeah, I mean, I was one of them, if I'm being honest, Ryan. You know, when polls were putting out, do you think, and I think, you know, we, if we come away with a draw, it's a result, but I didn't see that one coming. Especially in the first half, early penalty again. Uh, we got a penalty, yeah. Uh, so ready, you know, ready. And we want a penalty as well. No, people it, it say it's a bit harsh, but his arm were up in air. His arm yeah. was up in air, and, and ref seen the ref spotted it. To be fair, so it's a you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a good shout for me. When ready went one note up, did you think uh, here we go about seven, seven for eighth minute? Here we go again. It's going to be one of them. Kind uh, of days. Well, you, you, you can't fail, but not. So I thought. You know, once we start, once we started waking up, um, I thought we, we can definitely get back into this. Um, you know, I think it was actually a good response, really. Although the first half wasn't brilliant, I thought once after about 20 25 minutes, we we sort of took over after that. Um, um, we created a few chances in the first half, but none of them were like clinically, you know, what I mean, we didn't obviously mm. apart from the penalty, mm. which were, um, which you like I said, it was a penalty, um. You know, Cosgrove blazed it blazed one over, didn't he? When he should he should have been it in target, yeah. really. Um, but yeah, I thought once once that first once it went in, it's like that old feeling of oh no, is is it good? Is it today? Is it mm. today the day that we break the break the two year um, curse, if you like, of going mm. behind and not and not being able to win a game? And to be fair, you know, we went on and did it, didn't we? So. Um, yeah. I thought that Reading looked dangerous at times in first half. They were they were coming down um our left, their right, far too easy. That as mm -hmm. it, as ease what it call, I think uh, for Reading. I thought he had mm -hmm. a good game in certainly in first half, he it, it were it were tearing us to bits every time he got on a ball. Mm -hmm. And Andy heard him as well. They, they, they were terrorizing us at times. But once we once we started playing, I think, you know, I, I was confident that we could get on, you know. I, I was confident we were gonna go and do something. Um mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately we we did. Yeah, I mean, first half, uh, obviously, clubs have got uh, issues up and down country and even more yeah. so at Reading. Um, we saw that with tennis balls and that going onto the pitch. Kind of just sort to play, but, it, you know, um, I think Barry Cotter said on radio later and he got questions, so did it disrupt your uh, pattern of play? I went, well, no, because we won and it might be a bit tongue in cheek, but <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, you kind of feel for Reading fans because of ownership and that and stuff. Um, and again, protest and that. But we got to half time, one apiece. I were hoping that uh, we could like take it on to the next stage. And it, it turned out that way. I thought Luke O'Connell, uh, Summit Balls, what you're pinging off left, right, and centre, linking up play. Him lab, we've missed him so much. And, and him being back there. Just gives us that bit more reassurance at back because no, there's there's a, there's a few things he does so well. If that ball's bouncing around in middle of the field or he's lost it or one of others that lost it, he'll go back and win it nine mm -hmm. times out of ten. He's just got a knack of being able to go and win that ball back and not foul, not give foul, very rarely give fouls away. He's just got a natural knack to to, to doing it and then turning it round. And he, and his passing ability, his range of passing ability is is unbelievable. And having him there in that seat, that that seat, you know what we call the CDM role. And allowing Kane and, and, and Phillips to push forward like we did, like we had, like we did last season, just makes mm. it makes a massive difference. Because mm. if you think when we had Russell playing there, or even when he tried playing Kane in that position earlier on in season, we we seemed to be going up front a lot of time, and there were no there. You know what I mean? There were not, <laughs> there were no, never seen been out there. But we, there were a lot more, you know, um, Barnsley players pushing forward last night. And, and I, I, I really think it's because Luke Connell's such that rock there that they've got that, you know. Security, if you like, there mm -hmm. but to be able to to be able to push forward a bit further. So uh, I mean, just going on about imagine, making yeah. a difference. Just going on about making a difference. And I thought in second half, for for me personally, I thought there were two people made a difference in that when we came for the substitution. So credit where credit's due. We uh, to Collins on this is that when Cadden went off injured, uh, Styles came on. Yeah. And I don't know about what anybody else's thoughts on this and be interested in our comments, but Jallo took up plaudits and rightly so. I thought he'd, uh, he terrorised him. He'd be taking yeah. him. I also thought that Styles played better of the left wing back role 
but he did do a midfield, and it reminded me under yeah. the lockdown era under Ishmael, where I don't know, it seemed to be more of a, an attacking threat down that left wing back role. And I thought it was the best game I've seen him play for quite a bit, if I'm being honest. Uh, for this season, for the best I've yeah. seen him this season. It's because it's his position, mate. I know he wants yeah. to be a centre midfielder. You know, I think a lot of people might always want to be strikers, but not everyone can do it. I'm mm. not saying that he's a poor, he's been poor recently. I'm not saying he's a poor centre midfielder, but he's certainly a better left wing back or left midfielder mm. than mm. he is than he is a centre midfielder. Um, because if you think how well he did against so when he, in this first season when he broke into the first team when we when we stayed up on last eight season against Brentford, obviously he got one at goals, didn't he, Styles? Yeah. You know, he massively impressed from left wing back. And then when he under Ishmael, when we had that fantastic season, again, left wing back. Yeah. And and massively impressed. And I think that that's where he's that's where he is most effective. Mm. I thought, um, I thought so, he, yeah, he, and, and, and yesterday just proved it, didn't it? He came on and he looked great. He looked, he looked really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, I get, uh, I, I get surprised. I think Cadden and <clears throat> Dodgson might have a bit of a competition for um, for spaces out there now. Yeah, I mean, I, I get where you're coming from, like with midfield and he sees him as a midfield and that, that, that's fine. But when I've seen him as a bounded player, I've seen him more consistent and more a better player playing at that left wing back role. Yeah, I think totally. he offers us that bit more getting forward, and he also tracks back as well. And yeah. it, it just seems to have a, a decent left foot on him. He's got tricks that you know he can do it. He can. He's got the pace. And like I said, with him doing that on, on left, and then you've got Jallo. He was. I mean, Summer is running an unbelievable. Summer is sprinting. He's awesome. In the awesome. Jallo. Also, I mean, like you said, fair play to Neil Collins. Great decision not to give him just five ten minutes because mm. he's, he's. How can you really impose yourself on a game in yeah. five ten minutes? He, he yeah. give him half an hour. He gave him half an hour and he come on and he he run riot, mate. Them them defenders must have been thinking, "Holy hell's this?" Because he's, yeah. he's 16, 17 year old, but he's his footballing brain, his pace, his ability. The you know how assured he is with the ball at his feet, his confidence. He's he's well 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 above his years. That lad's going to be a superstar. I'm telling you. You it know the goal be... is absolutely, you know, great ball. The third goal, great ball from uh, Luca. He's hooked it from behind his head, and he's put it into a, you know, into a dangerous position. And, and Jallo's just left that lad for dead. Yeah. He's just left him. He's just absolutely left him, skinned him, and he's gone. And it, it clean, pair, clean pair of heels. And then what a ball, beautifully weighted, right into you see, you know, Max has made the run, mm. beautifully weighted ball, and there we go, go and finish the game off. So, you know, I'd like to see Jallo get in. A lot more game time, I have to say. Well, just before I, I want to touch on this way, uh, Jallo, is that I think it's a player that we need to tie down to a contract, definitely. Yeah. And I get where you're coming from. There's going to be clubs looking all over the place. I it would is. like, I would like, if Barnes, if possible, if possible, to try and build on this, because no pressure on kid, by the way, but it's seventeen. Is a star at making. Um, yes. We need to. I've seen some people like say, is Jallo a player that we need to be starting on, on a regular basis from from off? And I'm thinking, at this moment in time, be careful. That's why I, I was just about to say, same, Neil. No, I don't. Not not because I don't think he's talented enough to start. Just be careful. Just think. I just think he's only 17. Let's not. Yeah. Bur- let's not burn him out. Yeah. Yeah. Let's easy. Let's ease him into the team because if he gets half an hour, that that lad running at tired legs is is dangerous. Yeah. With you his know, waiting and, goal, and, and I think you know getting that confidence of being able to run at tired defenders and stuff will will build on his confidence. And I don't think he's quite ready. To start, not not it's not because of his title. I just I just don't want to I just don't want to burn him out. You know, what I mean, mm. he's only he is only seventeen, and I think the, the advantage that we'll have in in any sort of new contract negotiations with him is he's going to get first team football at Barnsley. He is because yeah. we're giving him it. If he goes to Leeds or if he got you know because Leeds are in the hunt for him and stuff like, is he really going to get first team football there? Probably mm. not realistically. You know, and at 17, 16, 17, you boy seventeen in he now. Sorry, seventeen, yeah. You may imagine how exhilarating it is for him to be playing first team footy because it's a, there's not many 17 year olds getting, you know, into first team. You know, there, there are some, but there's not many getting into playing first team football in front of a big crowd every Saturday. Mm. Um, you know, uh, it's only the really talented ones, but he's going to, he's going to be, he's going to get that game time with us and he's going to yeah. build up 
loads and loads of first team match experience with Barnsley where he where he might not get that. And that that experience there at that young age is is invaluable, you know, mm-hmm. to, to as your development as a player, I think. So I think we've got, you know, really really good ups into him at the moment. I think we've got a better chance than anyone of returning him. And you know, let's be realistic. He probably is going to leave at some point. Somebody's going to come in with a massive, great, a, a, a big deal. Mm. But let's tie him down to that contract for now, so mm. then we can sell him for a ridiculous amount in a few years, which is it's more than likely going to happen. Isn't it? He's going to go on and be a superstar, that lad. Yeah, yes. I mean, like I said, for me, and I think we all agree as Barnes fans and what like Ryan Severe, tying down to a, a contract, game for st- get a game, fifteen game time. But like I said. Gradually ease him in. Don't don't burn him out. Don't put away to expectations on lad, and you know po- possibly stifle his career because he's still growing. He's still learning. He's still yeah. maturing. There's there's world worlds it is oyster. It's absolutely unbelievable for kid. And long may it continue with Barnsley. We all know what will happen. We've seen it with John Stones in past, and and yeah. players of that uh, that caliber. Is that eventually they will go on, but you don't begrudge him that. We just want to. See him at Barnsley in the Barnsley shirt for as long as possible and get the best possible deal Absolutely. out of players like this. Um, so yeah, just before I get on to Waters goal, I mean, call strike. Wow, what, what, a, what a belt of that one, it mate. It was. And that's what he's and that's what he's paid to do. Neil. I mm. mean, he, let's face it, he won't have a great game, and he's not had. He's not being on the best of form. Let's just say that. A bit. He looked like lacking confidence and stuff like that. But then, Almost right true. at the right time, when mm. he's required from a striker. You know, like I like Ireland does for, for City. He'll he'll do no all game, then just pop up at right time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and that's what Cole did. You know, he can't fault him. He, he he didn't have a great game up to that point, but my God, what, right at the right time when you need your striker, Waller, take that, and that's and that's and that's what he did. So yeah, can't fault him. Yeah, I, like I said, I mean that when we went to one up, it went wild. I'm thinking, wow, let's let's see this game out, but. Yeah. I don't think we were happy to see game out. We were still on attacking ascendancy. And, and I'm thinking that such a black what I've touched on before with Jallo, you've got Luke O'Connell picking up ball and looking for a uh, dangerous through ball. Phillips, I thought, had a decent game. You know, he's had his knockers. Yeah. He, you know, he's, he's like not had best of games. And we've all touched on this. But again, you look at that trio, like last season, Connell, Kane and Phillips, would it have been different if McAtee it had been not picked up an injury? Maybe. It might have. Might have altered things. Back and up front, wasn't it? I would have thought. Yeah. But so we call, but. interesting, interesting. Um, what's your take on? I mean, for me, I think refs start, need to start clamping down on this. It happened with McAtee, just touching on McAtee at, in Blackpool game when yeah. he got a goal and follow through. Right. On um, what happened to Waters yesterday for me? I was that and not red. I don't know. The I, don't, I, don't know just I, don't, I don't I don't know because it's a stinking. Ch- it's an absolutely stinking That's, challenge. It could have been a clear injury. That it, mate. It, 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 he was hurt, Max. As soon as he scored, he waved his hand. He knew he was yeah. hurt. He, yeah. he, he, he waved his hand straight away because he knew he knew it. Well, you know, I wanted a card, don't, don't you? How, how is it not a red card? I mean, I've heard stuff like, mm. "Oh, well, it's about double jeopardy." So what's what's how far does that go? Then is he allowed to stand? Ed, but what 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 else are they allowed to do because of double jeopardy? Because it's gone in. It's a red card. The only, thing, yeah. the, only, the only hope that I've got is that because he weren't even yellow carded, and the same one against uh, McAtee for Blackpool yeah. is that if you're not yellow carded, then re- it can be done retrospectively, can't it? Yeah. If it goes in the rest, if if it goes in the rest report, mm. but yeah, two two in two games, mate. We've lost two strikers now to injury. I can't imagine Mac- Max is going to be injured. Both after the ball's gone and gone in. So how, how is it yeah. not? How is it not either? A, it's certainly a yellow, but. Both of them look like reds to me. Oh. Um, certainly one on Max yesterday. We're just disgraceful. He's gone in halfway up his leg. You know, it, it's all, yeah, it's yeah, no attempt to challenge. get to the ball. He's absolutely lamenting. I've seen it. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's baffling. Mate. It's frustrating. I don't, I don't know if there's some sort of, like, this trying to think of some sort of rule because ball were out of play because ball's got in goal or whatever. But you still, you don't get away with, with punching people or elbowing people, when, you know. True. <laughs> and stuff no, like that, So... Yeah, when, fair when comment. Like play, like we've seen people get sent off for all sorts, aren't they? For, for, for you know, balls, for scuffles so. that are going off on a car and all sorts of crap that goes on. So, I, I, yeah. I mean, I don't know all the rules, but that is, for me, it's a really, really poor challenge and you shouldn't be getting away with it. No, that's fair I comment. Hope, about... I hope that it gets done retrospectively because it would have, it would have shocked her. Yeah, I mean, that's fair comment about what you've just said about like double jeopardy and stuff and just what you were on about there. Yeah, just because ball were out of play and scored a goal, yeah, but... You could be like taking a corner, and there could be a scuffle going off over end at pitch. 
it's still, you know, they're not in play kind of thing, but they still get dealt with. And it's like that way, like just said there, McAtee took out at Blackpool, injured for how long, I don't know. That way, what, uh, Waters, when uh, Vicky went, come on, she was like, yeah, need to come off. But we were down then to 10 men. And look at it, yeah, we had that goal exactly. cushion. So what had happened if it had been 2-1 and they could have come back and equalised? Whiz... You can't make it up, can you? You, you can't. can't make it up, that rule. Listen, the rule's in place for, you can have five subs, but you can only do it on three occasions, can't you? So you've got to yeah. do two, what, two, two, two and what, whatever. Mm. Right? We'd already done this three substitution, so, type, you know, you used subs three times. So we could, we still had subs that we were able to use, but we couldn't use them because we'd done it over three times. Mm. And then Max is left. So that challenge brings Max off the field and we're the ones that are down at 10 men. Yeah. Make that make sense because I can't make that make sense. No. We're no. the ones that ends up down to 10 men no. because someone's lunged in on Max like that. Yeah. As uh, How is that in any way? Surely, surely they'll look at it, mate, but we'll... Some I guess, that, again, yeah. I guess we'll see, won't we? Um, it, we'll it see. Would, it would really poor. Like you said, if, if that had been... If that had got if they'd have got back into the game, I think there'd have been some proper kickoffs about oh, that. <laughs> but the can't. rules are what they are, what they are, and the, yeah. you know the ref wasn't doing anything outside the rules with regards to Max having to go off and not being able to substitute. Because mm. for me, there should be a rule about you know if a goalkeeper gets injured, then you should. I'm, I think there is with goalkeeper, isn't there? If the goalkeeper, goalkeeper could... you bring a keeper on um, if you've got substitution still left, but there should also be a rule where if somebody's badly injured, mm. you'll be able to replace him, especially from. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. And, and absolutely done him. Team team that could get penalised even yeah. though they, you know they didn't didn't had no wrongdoing in it. So mm. but apart from that, you know, uh bounce coming away from with a win, uh coming back from behind first time in I think two years. So, two it. year, yeah, two year. Um I think Doug O'Kane put something down to days. It was 766, I think he said. It? I'm like, wow. Yeah. Well, it, were, it, were, so. it was November 2021 against Derby, wasn't it? When it was yeah, one Joel Allen went in charge, charge, in charge uh, That's it. After, 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 it was a game after um, Shop had gone, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And we went one note down and then, I remember, if I remember rightly, it were... Um, it had a bit as that equalised and I think it was thinking that Scott winner, wasn't it? Got a got better memory than me. Oh. Lad, the kit we've just got rid of now to take it. Oh, Ezeka, uh, Lady Ezeka. Uh, Lady Ezeka, yeah. Yeah, I've got, got a better memory than me. Uh, I just can remember it took so long for us to come back from a win after going from behind. That's all I can remember. Yeah. Uh, I know it was Joel Alman, so yeah, long time, but all being well, it's uh, that's, that's another one put to bed kind of thing, and we move on from this. Uh, yeah. So, credit to Collins, you know, because he's. Two, two seconds, Neil. Dog's locked in kitchen, he's going to start right. barking. I'll be... No worries, mate. Uh, so I mean, uh, credit, credit where credit's due uh, for me is in that Collins. He started off at fans forum um, and he answered questions and he was veered up on pedal still, uh, you know, on stool. Um, is it then the day after it was Blackpool game, which wasn't great, um, and then it was back to league. So is that a bit of a? a an up and down kind of week, and he's come away with a win, and obviously brought back Duck. So fair play to Collins. He's made some substitutions. Uh, probably took a bit of heat off him because uh, everybody, you know, when Barnes are win, it's it's yeah. all good in it, you know. So like, like I said, like I said on, on last video, mate, I want him to do well. I don't want to. I don't want to be chopping and changing managers. Mm. I don't want him having to go out to the market and get a new manager. Um, you know, it, it can't go on. It what it, it, it can't go on for too long. But I, I want to see him turn it around and mm. and. and and for us to do well, that's all I want is for Bandit to do well. And if we can do that with Neil Collins, then brilliant. He's already in place. We don't have to go out with it with a new to get to a new manager who's going to come in with his new ideas and all this sort of stuff. Um, it might be a necessity, but we'll see. What we really need to do now, mate, is kick on. Is Maybe kick on. do you think realize that that style of play being a bit more direct, yeah, it will a bit long ballish at times, but mate, I'd, I'd much rather watch that a million times. I much, much, much prefer to watch that. Than what's that sideways backwards? Oh, yeah. Because it's not only is it boring, it's ineffective. Whereas yesterday, that long ball, more direct, we were far, far more effective. Far more effective. Do you think then now uh, that uh, when once Khaled goes on 15th, which is next Friday, do you think that the tide is slowly going to change at Barnes away? He's going to be working alongside such as like Bobby Assel up to now, sporting yeah. director, January transfer window coming up, a better understanding. But I think the atmosphere of the club might change. I think it might be. And this is my this is my take on it. 
I feel at times it's been an unhappy place for players and probably Gaffer as well, Collins. Uh, but I think once Cali does go and there's a new structure in place, maybe there will be a feel good factor around it and maybe they'll enjoy the football a bit better. Uh, looking at that performance against Reading, you kind of saw that we ain't players, even, you know, togetherness and the, the talk and the interviews after with uh, Cotter and Collins, it seems to be like a bit of a weight off the shoulder. So, who yeah. knows, coming into January, get a few of our bodies in, what he feels necessary. Uh, I'll be one we can keep players, but, but, but you know, what's going to benefit us. But it's going to be an interesting few weeks. Uh, Christmas Definitely period coming up as well, isn't it, mate? Yeah. Mm. So, I, th- I, I personally think that as fan, this is me as a fan, I'm a lot more enthusiastic just because I know Bobby's in that role. Mm. And now, you know, it, Bobby Assel's going to be making the decisions with, alongside with his, you know, working with Neil and working with Neil Collins and, and, and the guys to make the decisions on what they need. And it's not down to Khalid, mm. which were always a concern. It was like, who's this guy going to bring in? And he did, he did bring in some good players, but he brought in some shockers as well. Mm. But this is going to be a lot more football decision based by football people. <laughs> not not businessmen that are trying to do things, you know, looking at, oh, what's he worth? What could we sell him for? You know what I mean? And I'm sure that'll take a, a part of it as well. But I think ultimately the decisions that Neil Collins and Bobby Astle are going to be making are going to be football-based. And then they'll have to be able to go to owner saying, we need X, Y, and Z for this player. Um, and that, that, to me, is a lot more positive and it feels a lot more positive. Um, and hopefully a lot more, you know, the rest of the, the, the fan base can sort of see that as well. And hopefully, start to feel a little bit more, a bit more confident. I certainly feel a lot more confident about mm-hmm. this window because I said when when the when the director of football were announced, we said, didn't we? It needs to be in place. Yeah, before January transfer window, and and they have done. They put you know, albeit like albeit like I said, like a temporary one, uh, and hopefully for me full time, they've, yeah. they've got Bobby Asselin, and I think that's that's you know magic. I think it's a really really positive step in the right direction. Great. Hopefully, Great that has a positive effect on on the pitch as well, man. Yep, great point to leave that on. I mean, a positive step in the right direction, getting Bobby Assel in, um, linking up with uh, football and matters of things. So, yeah, all being well. Nice away win at uh, Reading. A performance as well is uh, re- the result. That's a, that's a pleasing aspect on it as well. Performance come away, one raving about, such as Jallo, Connell, Styles, Killip had a decent game. So, Cole, so a lot more positives coming out in it on the performance side. Um, like I said, with Bobby Assel, a footballing man got best interest with Barnes Football Club. So again, it's ticking all boxes again. A lot more confident going into the new year, going into January, knowing that football decisions are going to be made by footballing people. So again, it's it's. I think that's what we'll leave it on. We've had a good weekend, a great weekend. Um, we'll move on right now to the fixture coming up, which we'll do another preview on that. So as always, Ryan, it's been a pleasure joining me, mate. Uh, appreciate that. Everybody that's been watched this, let us know your thoughts and comments as well about the performance, about the players, about Jallo. Would you start him? Would you not start him? And are you feeling going into January now with Bobby Assel uh, taking over that role? So a lot, quite a lot to talk about, quite a lot to comment about. As always, have a great weekend. It's been made even better with your balance of win. Uh, one thing left to say, you Reds. <laughs>